Hey everybody, it's Farwizard23 here. Um, does everybody like the new headphones? These are the ones I bought at... Where did I buy them? I bought them at Staples? I think I, think I bought them at Staples. <laughs> commercial plug, commercial plug. Uh, but I wanted to make this video today because I wanted to talk about the movie The Lion King. Uh, I finally now seen... I was going to do this after uh, the Nostalgia Chick did her review of it and I've now seen the Nostalgia Critics... Uh, Disney Ember review of The Lion King, and I'm finally now able to give probably my most honest criticism of the film. I kind of was able to piece it together, like, okay, this is what I have a problem with the film. With. The film, um, it's a good film, except in my opinion for like, well, there's a couple things. First off, I do who um the ch the nostalgia chick said she didn't like um. Timon and Pumbaa, and I have to agree, I do find them, like, really, really just grating as characters. I, being older now, I, I kind of agree. It's just like, really? Like, this th This is supposed to maintain in this movie that has a this incredible... that They clash with the tone of the film, I, I as an adult, definitely. But this is kind of my bigger issue, and that is the whole... Pretty much the quote-unquote emotional struggle of Simba, where it's like, okay, so Simba... Um, let me get to the main focus of the issue that I have. It's when Mufasa dies. And there's this whole thing, you know, Simba feels really bad, and then Scar comes and basically says, you know, oh, it was an act. You killed him, but these things happen. Like, you know, convinces Simba that he killed his father, and then he leaves. When this movie came out, I was 11 or 12. I knew... My issue is, a, is an issue of the narrative that has been given to the audience. I knew that Scar was the bad guy. Like, it's so obvious that he's the bad guy. And, like, nothing happened to him immediately when that happened. And, yes, you could argue, oh, you know, well, well nobody else knew except, you know, Simba. But he was so emotionally distraught, he wasn't going to do anything. No, it's like we as an audience understand that he's the bad guy, but they didn't do anything about him. Uh, look at uh, Aladdin, for example. In Aladdin, okay, we've got... Um, we got Jafar. So, we start off the movie, we immediately introduce the characters, and then we see, oh, Jafar is using, you know, uh, uh, the magical snake staff, and he's, and he's hypnotizing the sultan, and he's making him do what he wants him to do. And then Aladdin comes in, and then he, and he uses his power to trick Aladdin into the Cave of Wonders, and he brings out the magic lamp, and Genie comes out, which, by the way, I feel the same way about Genie that I feel about Timon and Pumbaa, really just clash with the tone of the film. Though I do agree with the nostalgia critic that they did the entire the entire tone of the film as if the kids were like, like they're they don't speak like they're in Arabia. Arabia. It doesn't look like Arabia. It just it's such a very modernized take on it, and it's it really does seem very jarring. But okay, so then Aladdin uses his wish to become a prince, and then he comes in, and then Jafar's like all pissed off because now he might be able to get the princess. So he he gets the car, guards to capture him and kill him. But then Aladdin comes back and says, oh, Jafar tried to kill me, and Jafar tries to use his magic staff to convince the Sultan, and then Aladdin runs what's going on, grabs the staff, smashes, smashes the staff, and then Jafar is like, really screwed, but he uses his magic to get away, and then he steals the magical lamp away from Aladdin, realizing that he has it, and then he uses his wishes to cause all this bad shit to happen, and then um, he blasts Aladdin away, and but Aladdin manages, manages to get back with carpet, which... We have to kind of... Well, we could argue that time has passed during the time that Aladdin arrives back and when he was sent away. How fast the carpet can move. And then there's this huge climactic battle scene in which uh, Aladdin tricks him with his smarts to have Jafar use his last wish to become a genie, but that entraps him into his own lamp for us to grant wishes for all eternity, and then he uses, and then, uh, he uses his final wish to free the genie. There is a pace to the story, and it doesn't... The characters don't have anything to sit around and aren't just sitting around with nothing to do. Uh, George Lucas kind of said this with the Star Wars films. He, the characters have to be doing something. You have to rationalize why are all the characters there. What What is the purpose of all these characters? Um, he had expresses that problem when he was writing, doing the first Star Wars movie, Episode Four, that he got to a point in the script where Luke had to be left by himself, and then he realized that uh, Obi-Wan Kenobi had nothing to do. So his choice was to simply kill off the character and remove, remove him from the narrative. Which, inherently, he didn't realize, but it actually worked well to the plot, because he actually, he balanced the force, even though he didn't realize he did that. But he did, 
but Darth Vader effectively balanced the Force at that point, because there was Yoda and Luke, who had slight Jedi powers at that point, but was a, almost a Jedi, and you had the Emperor and Vader, but that's neither here, here or there. But, you know, the plot was moving, and we rationalized why each person is there. In Lion King, it's like... And all the information in Aladdin is given to the audience. We understand it visually or, was, or it was directly narratively given to us. Why that information is there. And myself as a viewer, if you're going to give me information, if you're going to give me information as an audience... Now, this is about me being a kid. I understood that Scar was the bad guy. He is now doing this horrific thing for the express purpose of getting rid of Mufasa because he's trying to... Uh, kill the new lion cub, which I... He's, he's trying to kill the new lion cub because he wants to be next in line to the throne, but then Mufasa keeps saving him, so, okay, he's got to get rid of Mufasa. So he makes this elaborate plan basically to pin it on Simba, and it's very obvious... I'm sorry, I'm trying to clean something. I'm sorry about that. He, he's trying to pin this on Simba, and it's like, well, wait a minute. I, as an audience member, know what he's doing. Why... Why is Simba buying this? And... From a story perspective, Simba is a little child. Little children are egocentric. They believe... Uh, look at, you know, I just can't wait to be king. You know, he's egocentric. You know, he cares about himself. You know, that's that's glaringly obvious in this story. Um, But it's like, as an audience member, I understand that he didn't do that. It's clear that he didn't do that, even by his own actions. It's not like he did something... That I, mean, I guess I guess it was roaring or something and that caused the initial echo and maybe he thought that caused them, but it's such a far stretch to even... As a kid, I feel like I wouldn't have bought that, that even if somebody told me that, I was like, but no, that's not what fucking happened. <laughs> Fuck you, uncle. Um, so I... And so that kind of leads to this dragging of the narrative, like how the Nostalgia Critic says that... I'm sorry to quote the critic, but Doug, you are awesome. Um where Scar becomes like a prima donna, that he just, he has nothing to do as a character. And we have Timon and Pumbaa who come in, who are supposed to effectively cheer up the narrative at this point by making, by giving him a philosophy that he just needs to forget about his troubles. I, I have mixed, I, I haven't really fully thought about Hakuna Matana and the whole, and the whole narrative with them, but I, 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 they just clash as a character with the very serious tone of the film. And, I guess, I didn't so much have a problem, and it just drags. The only time that main narrative ever really comes back and is acknowledged, that piece that we left off is in the the confrontation between Scar and Simba, where Scar is telling him, you know, you killed him, and he's like, it was an accident, no, and like he's ever made to really think about it, and I'm sorry, I could have rationalized it as an adult, wait a minute, think about this for a second, and admittedly, the only thing that is really held back is from Simba is that it was Scar, but it's like, we know it was Scar, it's like, so why... That doesn't come as a surprise. I mean, I'm not saying this had to be like, you know, Dark Knight uh, style writing where it was like, it was just a, this incredibly elaborate plot. I almost would have been liked it if we kind of knew Scar was bad and like things kind of hinted that Scar had done it wrong. But we were like, maybe he just kind of left on his own. Like if uh, Simba had just run away on his own. Like, we didn't know that, but that was almost kind of like what Scar had anticipated. And so he just kind of used that to his advantage. And then in that thing where he's like, I killed Mufasa. Like, in that moment, we see, we could see, how do you even describe this? We kind of, or even just some kind of thing where at some point, you know, we kind of just, you know, pin Scar gets called like, what happened, motherfucker? Tell me what happened to my dad. And he, Simba just... He gets the truth. He understands the entire narrative, or he, or he drags it out of the hyenas. You know what what actually happened, and he gets the full story of what happened at some point. But we never get that, and we know this guy is bad, and we just we we're not doing anything about it. And how the hell do all these other hy lions allow all these hyenas in here? I just don't get that. Like they would have beat the crap out of people, and I don't care if it's a monarchy or not. They would have overthrown his ass. I'm sorry. That never would have flown. It just... And I, I'm not even talking about the pride of lions or whatever, how they would have dealt with it. Like, no. We're establishing that these lions can talk. There's some... We've anthropomorphized them to some degree. That just wouldn't happen. I have to believe they kick his ass. And none of... 
not even anyone even likes Scar. I mean, he doesn't even show up for the princess, princess you know, crowning, if you want. You know, doesn't that kind of damage your reputation in the royal court to some degree? I don't know. It's so it's jarring. That plot point was always really jarring for me. Cause even as a kid, I'm like, "Wow, the Lion King! Oh no, Mufasa's dad died." Okay, he's blaming. Okay, Scar's convinced somebody to run away. Bullshit! Like, no, that's not what would have happened. Even as a like a 10, 11 year old kid, I knew that was wrong. That made no sense to me. Like, just from a narrative standpoint, and I feel like like a movie like Aladdin just handled it so much better. Like. The narrative moved along. It held all the characters and said, there's a reason a conflict is still existing. I just feel like Lion King dragged. Like, I never really found anything special for that. So, that is all I wanted to say on that. Hope you enjoyed hearing my rant on the Lion King. So, bye-bye, uh, everybody.